This video is called, Help Me, I Am Stuck in WordPress World. See this guy, he's stuck. And this is for developers that are stuck in a CMS rut. Uh, now there's a few things I should point out right away. First of all, you can substitute any CMS for WordPress whenever I say WordPress here. So that could be Drupal, Craft CMS, and so on. Uh, this video is really for developers who find themselves stuck in the dead zone of being proficient in a CMS, but they feel much less capable outside of one. I personally was stuck here for at least five years earlier on in my career as a developer. Um, and I personally know many, many dozens of developers who are stuck here right now. So it is a very real place. Um, and secondly, I have to mention that I'm not hating on WordPress, Drupal, or any CMS. They are a very real technology. They serve an important purpose. Many top-notch companies need and use CMSs. The problem is... Many developers uh, have the experience where they're learning web development and a CMS helps them get very far, very fast through templates and plugins. Um, but after a while developing in a templates and plugins world, they find themselves at a dead end. There's something mentally about the way you approach a templates and plugins world that is different from the whole rest of the world of web development. Um, and they've been shielded from many aspects of that development world, and they cannot break out of CMS world. So that's who this video is for. It's designed to help you break into development arenas that CMSs may have been shielding you from. So how do I know if this is me? Um, you'll know this is you if any or all of these apply to you. Uh, one, if you're comfortable creating sites in a CMS, but you're uncomfortable creating sites outside of WordPress or the CMS of your choice. Uh, then this video is for you. Uh, also, and or, if you think in terms of hacking and tweaking instead of building. So if you hack and tweak things as normal instead of build new things, uh, for an example, hey, we need a calendar. So instant thought, let's look for a calendar plugin I can tweak to fit my needs. Or instant thought, let me find a template uh, that looks like the website I need to build and tweak it to fit my needs. Um, so if you think in terms of hacking, tweaking, instead of building, then this is for you. Also, if you mostly or only know how to work with plugins, you don't really know how to code stuff by yourself. And that leads into, if I asked you to build an application like Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, without a CMS, you'd have no clue where to begin. Um, and lastly, I guess, if you don't actually know how a CMS works behind the scenes, and you really couldn't begin to build the CMS that you use all the time, then this is for you. So if this is you, do not feel bad. Just be aware that there is so much of the development world out there uh, to know an experience that you haven't known and experienced yet. And it's gonna be very good for you to break out of exclusively CMS world. Um, and they, the one exception I'd say is if you consider yourself, if you consider yourself to be a designer, a graphic designer who can also implement that into the web. If your true passion is look and feel and you have no desire to learn development, then intentionally stop at HTML, CSS, and, and maybe lightweight JavaScript like jQuery. Uh, but that being said, when I was stuck in CMS world for those five years, I would tell myself that it was because I was a designer, but the truth was all I knew how to be was a designer. I didn't know that I absolutely loved development uh, because it kind of intimidated me and I had never learned it. I was in a box and I never knew that I was. Uh, and lots of developers are in this place as well. So, ah, if you determine this is me, you're talking about me and one of those things, what do I do? Um, first of all, you need to make a mindset change. You are a builder, not a repurposer. Um, it's kind of like the difference between people who go buy old dressers on Craigslist and refinish them to make them look all trendy, but they can never build a trendy dresser from scratch, from raw materials. Uh, and so that's kind of the mental difference is you need to learn how to work with the raw materials, the raw lumber, so to speak, in the development world. But instead of wood, it's pieces of technology, it's frameworks and servers and utilities and stuff like that. Um, it's not as intimidating as it might sound, and it is far more fulfilling to build something from raw materials than to repurpose something else that somebody else built. They're both fun, but building is definitely, in my opinion, drastically more fun. So you're going to change your mindset. And then the big piece is, is you're going to learn an application development skill set. 
Now there's a few different skill sets that you can choose from. Uh, so you get to pick one, pick a road, any road, as you can see from the picture here, they all lead to the beach. You're, they're all gonna take you forward, so don't sweat this decision too much, but pick a skill set. You can be front-end developer, full-stack developer, or back-end specialty developer. And like I said, all roads kind of lead to advancing yourself in technology. There's overlap, there's blend. You're not gonna get pigeonholed into one thing. You can easily cross between these as you move forward as a developer. So keep that in mind, have fun, pick the one that seems like the most fun to you. In general, if you're left-brained, uh, you know, you like intense data and math, go more back-end. In, in general, if you're more right-brained creative, go more front-end or full-stack. But those are general generalizations, very broad sweeping brushes. You don't have to hold yourself to those rules. Um, so if you're going the front-end developer skill set, these are kind of the list of what you need to do. First, uh, you need to learn how to build a responsive HTML, CSS layout and page from scratch. Uh, now this is kind of a core competency of a front end web developer. And it's funny, lots of people can actually build sites in WordPress for a decade and not know how to do this. So if that's you, the first core competency you have to develop is how to build HTML, CSS layouts and pages from scratch. Lots of people do know how to do that that are WordPress developers, but many, many people don't as well. Uh, secondly, you gotta learn a JavaScript framework. You're gonna build client-side applications, not just little widgets, not just little jQuery plugins. You're going to build applications with a framework. Um, I'd recommend just go for React. I think React is something you cannot go wrong with these days. If you're not gonna go with React, go with Angular or Vue. Vue is the simplest of the three, so if you find React and Angular, very intimidating and difficult, uh, kick it off with Vue and then move into something else. Angular is also very popular, but in general, I think React is the best for the way it will make you think as a developer. I think it will teach you very good habits, very good mental approaches towards how to build applications. Uh, so layouts, learn a framework, and then pretty much learn how to consume backend APIs. You don't have to know how to build backends, but you do have to know how to work with them, how to get data. So you can use services like backend lists or Firebase. I have a very stripped down free thing called rest.learncode.academy, uh, which is just a uh, server that resets its information every day, but you can kind of play around with a fake backend on there. And it's again, completely free. And then lastly, you need to learn how to set up, which is a, the fancy word for that is provision a static site web server and get your code on there. So, you know, how do you get a static site web server? You can Google how to provision static site web server with DigitalOcean or with your service of choice. Um, so you get a choice there. I'll put a code in the description for some free money on DigitalOcean, $10 or $20 for free. I forget exactly what the value is, but you can actually mess around with servers for free. Um, and again, that's a referral link. I get free credit if you use that, but I never use that credit anyway. So feel free not to use it. Uh, so if you want to go full stack developer skill set, here's kind of what that world looks like. You actually begin with everything from front end. So front end's kind of a good place to start. Um, plus, you're going to shoot to, hey, can I install a database locally and on a production server? Uh, you can't go wrong with MySQL and or MongoDB. Uh, those are two good players to go with these days. There are some trendier, newer databases, but MySQL and MongoDB are hands down the most popular two. So those are good choices to go with. Um, and then you're going to learn how to build a backend application for your front end application. So full stack developers tend to build, say, a single page React app and then the API that that app consumes. That tends to be where a full stack developer stops. So you're, you're building the database and you're exposing an API to your front-end application. Uh, so that way your front-end application can read and write to that database. And that's usually about where full stack developers tend to stop. And then, you know, the ability to deploy that application to production. So how to deploy Node.js application to production is a good thing to search on Google. And then what technologies and languages, um, if you're saying, just tell me a good one, go with Node.js with a framework being Express.js. You can't go wrong with that. Now, if you're really comfortable with PHP, because almost all these CMSs are PHP, um, start off with Lumen and then go Laravel. 
Um, it, since Lumen is, is much simpler, lightweight, it's much more like Express.js, Laravel, Laravel is very full featured. Uh, but honestly, even if you know PHP and you're up for a challenge, go with Node.js. It's simple, it's JavaScript, and you really cannot go wrong with it these days. It's an awesome piece of technology. So there's your second skill set. And your third skill set, back in developer skill set, you will learn everything from full stack, but not the front end portion. So you'll learn how to set up a database. You'll learn how to consume information from that database. You'll learn how to expose an API that front end applications can use, but you will never build those front end applications. Um, and then you will learn how to scale an app as traffic grows, uh, which sounds complicated, but it's not really that bad. Uh, you'll use a load balancer like Nginx or HA proxy. Either one of those are great picks. Um, and you'll learn how to back up and restore the database of your choice. That's not really too hard. They're made to be backed up and restored. Optionally, you can learn how to scale those databases to handle large amounts of traffic. Um, and then how do you continuously test and deploy an application? So when you push to GitHub, tests run on your code. And when you merge to master or merge to a specific branch, then it automatically goes out into production servers. Um, this is, you don't have to learn this to start backend, but it's definitely a part of the backend developer skill set. Um, some companies out there offering uh, continuous integration tools are CodeShip, CircleCI, TravisCI, all very good companies. And they also want to learn how to deploy with Docker these days. That's also something that a developer should strive to have in their skill set as a backend developer. And then how do you provision servers with code? This is a little more advanced backend developer skill set, uh, but using what's called configuration management tools, how do you get servers set up using code that you wrote in advance? So you can essentially use that code over and over again to create 10 identical servers in production. You don't have to do it manually. That's a, a very good thing. It's worth doing. It's worth spending the time on. So there's your skill sets uh, to go for. I'm going to give you a quote. You owe it to yourself to know more than just a CMS. That's from me. Uh, I'm giving you that quote. Hopefully this helps you out. If you found yourself stuck in that world that I was stuck in, hopefully this gives you not just the motivation incentive, but a roadmap to get out of there and start experiencing much more of this broad and enjoyable world of web development. And that is all. Thank you so much. Have a great day and keep on coding.